The Federal Reserve is solely responsible for what we see in the US markets today. There is no denying it. They have finally acknowledged that prices are elevated and that more risk taking is going on, but have yet to state the obvious. Printing trillions of dollars and keeping interest rates ultra low for an unprecedented amount of time creates bubbles. But you and I both know we aren't going to hear that admission ever. For us, we can simply look at the data, acknowledge reality, and prepare accordingly. And that's why you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today I have an extremely important episode, and I know I've said that many times before, but this one is so key, particularly in the first few minutes, because I'm going to show you directly from the Federal Reserve sources what they have said. I have so much to cover. Let's get into it right away. Take a look at the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve every week. I give you an update on this and you could see what has happened. Yet again, we do see an expansion in the balance sheet. Should that be a surprise to anybody? Look, this is what happens. Now, of course, it's a minor increase and that's something you want to take with a grain of salt. But regardless, it did increase and that's what I was expecting. It's not at the highest it's ever been, certainly, but we could see that the trajectory is clearly higher and higher. I will give you updates as we go along week by week. This is new information coming directly from the Federal Reserve Monetary Policy Report. And I suggest people read it. It's not that long and it will tell you everything that they are currently looking at at this time. In general, what we see through this, just to give you a summary, is basically growth is pretty good. Job situation's pretty good. Inflation's pretty good. Risks are not that bad. Everything is totally fine. Largely the same as what you would hear even in the snippets on CNBC or wherever. But there's a couple little tidbits that I wanted to show you. Of course, always giving you what I can here at the Money GPS. And there are two points in here specifically that are so key and yet they were overlooked. So let's take a look here at the top paragraph. The volatility in repurchase agreement repo markets in mid-September 2019 highlighted the possibility for frictions in repo markets to spill over into other markets. Before I go on, let's just cover this quickly. Finally, they acknowledge the fact that, yes, when you have a problem in the repo market, that can create a problem elsewhere. Why do you think we have been talking about this over and over and over and over again? I have brought up the repo situation on more than half of the videos that I've done here. It's so important, not just for the repo market, not just because you got players like JP Morgan involved. No, not at all. It's the ripple effect or the domino effect that people need to be concerned about. Finally, Asset valuations are elevated. Wow, can you believe it? The Federal Reserve acknowledged the obvious and have risen since July 2019 as investor risk appetite appears to have increased. So that's pretty clear to me, of course. I know you as well. When you look at the data, it is impossible to ignore. The prices of everything have risen despite what you see with the CPI, with the core PCE, and any any other fake inflation rate. They're not going to admit that obviously, but we can take these little tidbits out of here, piece it all together and create our own vision of what we really believe is going on. In this section here, they're talking about the balance sheet policy and they mentioned something so important and I'm not sure anybody else noticed this. Since October 2019, the size of the balance sheet has been expanding to provide an ample level of reserves to ensure that the federal funds rate trades within the FOMC's target range. For some people, they might just glance over that and think to themselves, okay, nothing to see here. But break down what they're saying exactly. The fact that they want to keep interest rates at these ultra low levels okay if these are interest rates since 1980 peaking out basically falling down to zero how in the world do they keep them down well they have to use something called open market operations open market operations are essentially printing a bunch of money in order to apply pressure downward pressure on those interest rates now what if they wanted to bring those interest rates which are extremely Extremely low right now let's be very clear but if they wanted to get them down to that zero percent range or perhaps even in the negative what would they have to do well they would have to use open market operations and print even more money so what does that do to the balance sheet of course they have to expand 
expand it. They have to expand their balance sheet to a level we have never seen before in order to continue to apply downward pressure. This is something that I have talked about so many times before. If you are a subscriber here on this channel, please, please put that down in the comments. Help me out. Make me a little happy today. I want to know if you have heard me talk about that over and over and over again. This is why I say interest rates are not just setting a number into a computer. They are actively in the market on a daily basis with this open market operations. And it is nothing more than printing money. Of course, there's more to it than that. But essentially, that's what they're doing. Printing money out of thin air and they're pumping it into these markets. We've got all kinds of problems going on, whether that's a repo crisis or whether it comes from any other avenue. But this right here is so important because they are setting interest rates at such an abnormally low level that requires an expansion of their balance sheet and they put it right here on their monetary policy report for everybody to read. So it's not me. It's not the money GPS saying this. It's the Federal Reserve themselves. This article of Reuters had an interesting quote I wanted to show you. Every time there's been a downturn in the market, the Fed has stepped in to ease. We've seen that before, I'm showing you the charts, the examples, everybody knows that. Investors have been trained in a Pavlovian manner to not assess risk and buy every dip you get. And that's where we get into the danger zone because people are not addressing reality. If there's a problem, even a small one, you would see the stocks come down in response to it. And then maybe the next day, if they feel more confident, you would see the stocks going up. Now, does that mean the average investor is going to buy and sell stocks on a daily basis? No, not that. But we do see that the computer algorithms and that the institutions would react to this information day to day. And we're talking about trillions of dollars being moved around. But today, that isn't happening. If the stock market comes down in the morning by 100 points, it's up to 100 by the afternoon. That's a problem. That really is a problem. People People need to see it that way. Why in the world would you not want a healthy, growing stock market and economy? Instead, you have stimulants. It's like a steroid. It's not a good idea to see this happen. This is directly from the IMF's own website. And unfortunately, the way that they have it, it's really hard to read, it's really small font. Let me read it to you. What explains the strong performance of risky assets? One important driving force boosting asset prices was the synchronized monetary policy easing throughout 2019. Where have you heard that before? Well, the Money GPS might have mentioned that once or twice before. If you've heard it here at the Money GPS, please, please, let me know in the comments. It sounds ridiculous for me to read something like this because I've been saying that so many times. It's, it's so obvious. You and I both know it, but I just want that acknowledged right here, documented. Big year for rate cuts, central bank cuts rates over the course of 2019. And you could see, I've shown you similar charts before, but we are acting like it's a crisis. When you look at what the central banks are doing, it's as if they're in a crisis mode. And yet, they say everything's fine. Growth is fine. You could read the monetary policy report and see what they say. Okay, pretty good this, pretty good that. But we're just going to react as if everybody is panicking on the inside and not letting anybody know. If these reporters actually had the bravery to acknowledge this, just, just one thing here, and ask Jerome Powell at the next time there's a question and answer, why are you reacting like it's a crisis when Clearly, you're not saying that. But of course, we'll never see that. Also from the IMF blog post, they had this chart I wanted to include as well because it brings me into another point. Default and downgrades show vulnerabilities. Recent data points to potential weaknesses among high yield debt issuers. What have we talked about in the corporate bond market? That there are serious issues that many people out there have brought up. When we see the divergence here noted by the default rate in the blue line as well as the percentage change in rating with the green line, it tends to be very concerning. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a recession tomorrow, but it is a good indicator, as you can see in the previous two instances. The only time it didn't result in a full-blown recession was 2015-2016 timeframe, which was more of an earnings recession, which was serious problems in places like China. Of course, around the world slowed down. We know the drill here. 
The same thing happening today on a smaller scale. So we will see how this impacts the corporate debt market. Remember what we've said time and time again about the triple B bonds, that triple B debt is not good and it is going to create a problem the next time around. There's no doubt about it. Whether or not it's going to be the catalyst, that's a whole different story. A list of warning signs for the rally that's pushing U.S. stocks toward another record is growing longer. As the S&P 500 index embarked on a torrid fourth day rally, corporate executives and officers have stepped up selling shares in their own companies, so much so that there were five insider sales for every one buy. That's poised to be the highest since early 2007. It'll probably get even worse as we move throughout the year if stocks continue to go higher. What did I just say right now? Insider are selling at a very fast pace. Yes, they are doing so probably automatically in certain cases. If the stock achieves a certain number, they're going to sell off shares. But I don't think that applies to everybody. Sure, for some people, no doubt about it. But for everybody, that's not the case. We are watching as the stocks move to certain levels, particularly with the stock buybacks. This is giving them incentive to sell off and new investors come in and buy up those shares. I don't think they're necessarily buying shares right now. Now, these individuals, the insiders, maybe as part of their compensation, they're given shares. But we are seeing the retail investors that are now going in, trying to buy the dip, trying to just get it at any price. And that's usually what we see at this point in the cycle. They make another interesting point a little further down. While other factors can also drive the decision to unload shares, the action from company's highest ranking employees is worth heeding. A similar spike in insider sales coincided with the market's peak of January 2018 that gave way to a sell-off later in the year. There's a chart associated with that. I could show you here. Insider Delts company executives step up selling as the S&P 500 marches towards record highs. The white line is the insider sell versus buy ratio. And the blue line is the S&P. And you can just see the previous instances. This chart goes back from 2014 up until the present day. It's just some food for thought. That's all. I wanted to include this here and it's dealing with the PBOC and you can see the rolling four week liquidity injection withdrawal going back since the financial crisis up until present day. This shows you a record 2 trillion of the Chinese currency which equates to I believe it is 300 billion US dollars all injected in and all to make sure everything stays nice and calm and you could see what happened with the markets. They certainly like this huge rush of liquidity. And this is what it comes down to. The central banks around the world are willing to go all the way as far as they need to. Doesn't matter what they do to the system. Doesn't matter what happens to the currencies. They will all become confetti at some point. If you want to know where all the inflation is going, I'm going to show you these four charts. It basically just shows you year after year after year. It might be hard to tell from the chart itself. But you can just see the growth as it goes through the year. Okay, that's what it's trying to depict with each of these lines. The chart on the left-hand side, record annualized inflows into investment-grade bond funds. It's absurd, absurd. Now, we'll see what happens for the remainder of the year. But at least at this point, there's this massive rush going in that direction. But it's not just this. Record annualized inflows into emerging market debt and equity funds. That's the chart on the right hand side. Again, an absurd level going that way. And then we have these two charts, record annualized inflows into tech funds. 2017 was crazy. 2018 was also crazy, but this is making it look like absolutely nothing. On the right hand side, second largest inflows to healthcare funds ever. There's so much liquidity out there in the system and it's finding its way everywhere and anywhere that it can. This is truly the everything bubble. Junk bond scare is rising. No one cares. People are buying everything. That's a quote. Even the strategists at Charles Schwab are saying investors should reduce their exposure to junk bonds. It's crazy to see what has happened. Look at this. Total revolving credit owned and securitized. Essentially, we can look at this like credit card debt for the most part, soaring to new levels over and over and over again. The only time this ever went down outside of the financial crisis, of course, was this period here. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a data revision that wasn't actually people getting rid of their debt. You could see time and time again, we get the data. Yes, it does go up and down, but in general, we watch it go higher. And why? 
did the economy do so well in December? Well, look no further than credit card debt. That's right, people, just like they do every day. But of course, during the holiday season, more than ever, they put more and more on their credit cards, take out some form of loan in order to buy things they don't need. Now you're seeing the same data coming from the Federal Reserve's other website. That was the Fred website. This one is the federalreserve.gov. I wanted to show you in this chart form as well. I give you as much as I can here on the channel. And here's another chart that shows you the revolving credit month over month. That's December's numbers. And you could see that we haven't had it at this level since the 90s. Essentially one of the highest on record ever. So an expansion of debt that individuals simply cannot keep up with. You can't expand and an economy by printing money over and over and over again. It just doesn't work like that. This is what they want to have happen. And unfortunately, it's all breaking down. That's all for this video. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to support me, you can just click this button. And I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, if you want to learn how to sell on Amazon, I have a free e-course available to my subscribers. There are so many courses out there that charge you 1,000, 2,000 plus, and you don't even know if you're interested in it. Why not just take a free e-course? It's so comprehensive, teach you so much, and won't cost you a thing. Check it out, theamazongps.com. For those of us out there that actually enjoy reading, well, these two books will give you everything you need to know about the foundation, the history, the asset classes, all the detail. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. Hang on a second, hold on. Have you seen this video? If not, I highly recommend watching it. If you don't have much time, you can always watch it on a faster speed. But whatever you gotta do, watch it, click on it, and I'll see you there.